Welcome back. This episode about the two houses by Le Corbusier in Weissenhof is pretty special. Located in Stuttgart, Germany, this colony was a milestone at the point, both for the collective, getting all architects in a common space with the goal, as well as in particular for Le Corbusier, as this served as a trampoline for the enunciate of his five points for new architecture. Let's jump into it, we have a lot to cover. But before that, if you like the channel's content, please subscribe and click that bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. The state was built for the Deutsche Werkbund, which was a German association of artists, architects, designers and industrialists in 1927. The German architect Mies van der Rohe was in charge of the project on behalf of the city. And it was he who selected the architects, budgeted and coordinated their entries, prepared the site and oversaw construction. It had 21 buildings overall, designed by 17 European architects, among them Le Corbusier, that was awarded the two prime sites facing the city and by far the largest budget. The houses had a common language, simple facades, flat roofs and almost all of them were white. Hans Pölzig, Bruno Taut, Mies van der Rohe, Le Corbusier, Kropius, Hilbersheimer, from the original 21, only 16 are still standing. The completion of the Weissenhof estate would mark the start of the Die Wohnung, exhibition of 1927, allowing visitors to personally experience a new vision of society through architecture, based around the ideals of reducing costs, simplifying housekeeping and improving living conditions. After the style linguistic crisis of the 19th century in architecture, the beginning of the 20th century is marked by the urgency to find the new language, independent from the existing limitations and rules. The first ones to try to tackle this issue are the European vanguards, from the beginning of the century, which are able to find single points in this new language. A new language that shies away from the conservative and old styles to look for new objectivism the Neulichkeit. From the very classic style based on the natural language and concepts, we move towards an abstract language, based on geometric elements, point, line, plane and volume. This is what Le Corbusier refers with the statement, the wise game, correct and magnificent of volumes grouped under the light. Pure volumes as architecture foundations. In addition to the volume and to complete the language, the previous step, the plane. Coming from all the cubist explorations, the plane concept gets really developed in Netherlands by Mondrian, van Dersburg, Rietveld, with their still between 1914 and 1918. This new language shouldn't impose itself over any other art, but an abstract language that could live in architecture, sculpture and all traditional arts, but also in new ones as photography and cinema. In this search, artists get together to find that new way, independent from the discipline, the neoplasticism, language of the planes. Le Corbusier gets influenced by neoplasticism through Van Dersburg during Bauhaus in 1923. Here the second presents this new theory. Two years later, Le Corbusier introduces his five points of a new architecture. Through the new constructive systems, Le Corbusier enunciates the five points of his new architectonic proposal. This brings a higher level of freedom to the design and construction phases compared to the traditional brick or concrete processes. The two first ones, the free plan and the free facade, base themselves on the structural skeleton. The other three are derived from those, roof garden, pilotis and horizontal window. 
If the structure is supported in points and not continuous, the plan can be treated with freedom, both in composition and uses. And if the plan is free, it is free in any plane, also at ground level and roof level. If the facade is only an enclosure, it can be treated as a white canvas and allow a totally free window style, even the long horizontal window. These five points, along with the neoplastic principles, functionalism and rationalism, are the basis of the new modern architecture. Le Corbusier was granted with the best location in the state and in charge of houses 14 and 15. His initial proposal, together with Pierre Janaret, was rejected due to budget restrictions and after some discussions with the jury, they agreed on redesigning house 15 with a reduced footprint that would fit two dwellings in the same footprint as the original home. The first house responds to a way of living free of artificial restrictions. It is the result of the studies made after developing the Citrohan concept. Standardization of the door, windows, the contrast between a big space where you live all day with a good air quality and natural light, and a small spaces for the rest of the house affairs, of shorter duration. This space optimization increases efficiency of the design and construction. The second house follows the same principles but in a different way. The big space is achieved through movable elements, in a similar way as train cars. During day, the house is open from one end to the other, creating a large room. All that concerns sleeping is hidden in blocks. The side corridor, extremely small for today's standards, was designed following the same dimensions as the one in the trains, used as a night clearance only. Again, the machine for living in, Le Corbusier's principle. Seen in toward an architecture where he compares temples with cars, in the Unité d'Habitation as a transatlantic, and here as a train. This scandalized a lot of visitors of the exhibition, as well as the more conservative side of the press. On the other hand, the roof garden is an authentic architectural event a static space designed for meditation and relaxing. And this brings us again to the end of the video. I would also like to thank you all for the comments and the continued support by subscribing and we'll keep uploading new building videos and analysis. See you all in the next one. Bye.